Good morning, peeps. What the heck is Red Bull Blue? The emote lives. It's alive, alive. What's Red Bull Blue? Advertise me. I'm not a Red Bull drinker, so I don't know. Good morning, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Aurelius. Andrew, knock fun today? No, but we'll talk about it since I said I'd talk about it. <clears throat> knock unfun today. <clears throat> Evan, I don't know how to take that statement. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go with that you donated blood. Okay, there you go. Good. <laughs> Not rip knock. Shut up, Tony. <laughs> just a little kink, little kink in the plans. Always something, man. It's always something. Yeah. So the emote, the full emote, is finally alive. So we can stab me in the head now. Jeff didn't quit. Shut up, Tony. So I got to say these things out loud just so people don't believe you. Even though they don't, I mean, just as a habit, they don't believe you anyway. So that's cool. But yeah, emotes always work better on desktop. Y'all having a good morning? I'm having a wet morning. This rain is stupid. There's a car that ran off the road in a ditch that's now it's like half flooded crazy like my entire town is like a flash flood UEF how did you do that <laughs> Borg and Borg your helper on record yep oh yeah I, you, I, you did send me a text that I didn't reply to <laughs> I figured that'd go over well <laughs> yeah that's one of those texts I see like when I'm driving or something and then I was like, oh, that's funny. I should reply. And then I just like more texts come in and it gets pushed down the list and I never see it again. So if you ever really need me and you text me, you should text me more than once if I don't reply in a decent amount of time. But I know you didn't need me there. You were just messing with me. That was funny, though. <clears throat> you can modify emotes. That's right. There is like a, a way to do that. Pin mail day. Yo, Jesse. I think I have as much rain as you have as, as snow. I think that's what's going on in my world right now all right alexander just sent me something he said i can show it today let me see what it, let me see what it is it's bright is what it is oh yeah all right so i told alexander out oh there he is so we're gonna put this in there he did this uh we're at about 12 inches of rain i'm not gonna lie he worked on this um custom fodder stack color builder for knock it's sick like like these are the kind of things that get my eyes watering <laughs> like all these colors are just crazy <clears throat> if we could ever get our new one out oh I should pull this up on the on the monitor for those that can't see there you go. We're just playing with this case customizer. So we can do this. So like the idea is eventually to um, to launch a product. This isn't our knock talk, Andrew. Um, the, the idea is eventually to launch a crowdsourced product, right? Like probably like a lookout or something like that, where you can go in and, and do these different, uh, different colorways. And like what the stuff that Alexander does is just... Like how good is looking is this? Look at this thing. This is just like this gets me going. This gets me going. Like I love this. Maybe our most popular color color ever, right there, Raven Aqua. What's experimental? It says you might break something. Oh, I just went to I just went to the knock page. Oh, this is where he was, um, oh, I know, so the sourcing on this was Alexander saving the color schemer tweets. Um, I remember now, like anytime I retweet uh, a color schemer, he would put it on here, including some of our own, like Steel and Mango, like some of these exist, but like not all these exist. I guess maybe, maybe they do exist. Damn, maybe these are all our colors. The experimental, I think, is the, uh is the color schema right 
Yeah, the experimental, I think, is the color schemer colors that I saved. God, have we done this many colorways? That's sick. Look, you can even reverse the tag. This is so good. I'm not even going to pay attention to y'all. I'm just going to keep clicking on this for a while, okay? Oh, look at this. Invert colors. This shit's wild. Good morning, baby cat, paper cat lady. Mandarin blue jay. Golly. I forget some of the colors that we did. Oh, yeah, we did this forest and pink in uh, our wallets. Oh, God, he even put in, like, the... Uh, these two, these rare colors that we did. Smango and Snow Jay. We had some extra white Cordura <laughs> one time. And we knew we'd never make a, a really white case. Um, so we made them for like the Atlanta Pin Show. Man. Kickstarter exclusive Peacock at Midnight. This is crazy. Good morning, Bulbasaurs. This is crazy. Mandarin Steel. It's one of my favorites. Everyone else likes Steel and Mango. I like Mandarin Steel. Oh, that was the Kickstarter. Where's Mandarin Steel? <clears throat> Ma uh, Ma Steel Mango, excuse me. Steel Mango. If you were Steel Mango, where would you be? Oh, this was a good one too. Mandarin Mango. There it is. Steel Mango. That's a good one. Good morning, Thunder Viking. Oh, man. I love our stuff. I'm not going to lie. So I guess I guess this is the perfect time to not talk about Knock, uh, Andrew. So here you go. I was hoping we'd have something to share today. Brad likes the orange one. Shock, shocked face. Shocked Pikachu face. Let me get this out because it's, it's brightening my face. Um, all right, so y'all go play with that. Um, and thank Alexander for that because he's the best. <clears throat> White and blue special edition. Yeah, y'all have more of that stuff than I do. Um, so I was hoping I was going to be able to talk about kind of future planning for Knock today, but that has been put on hold because uh, Jeff has a thing that we need to discuss this afternoon. So we're supposed to have a call earlier this week. Things changed um, at Jeff's uh, place of employment. And I think in a positive way for Jeff. So I have to hold off on any knock announcements to not get myself in trouble for what might be coming down the pipe. So I was hoping I was gonna be able to lay it out there um, for you today, but we have a, um, we're on hold and then uh, Jeff and I have a call this afternoon and I'll kind of get a new game plan. Then maybe next week we'll see what um, what I can get to. Here's the link. So maybe next week we'll see what I can get to as far as that goes. I don't know. We'll see. Um, we'll see about talking to Jack, Jeff. Uh, once I talk to Jeff this afternoon, hopefully um, we'll see. So super positive for Jeff. Um what it means for like what we were planning to do with knock i don't know yet so once i talk to him but our initial plan got changed at at the really at the 11th hour <clears throat> jeff is bon vivant he uh he works for like a, a sewing manufacturer he's like a, a supervisor but it looks like he's gonna go into r d uh which is what he's the best at so i think I'll, I'll have to figure out that. Um, we've both been traveling, and then he was sick all day yesterday, so we haven't been able to talk, and we have a call this afternoon. So it's good for him. So I, I'm super happy. It's, I'm super positive. I just, so I just so the long story short is I don't have details to share today that I thought I might, so we'll see next week what this change is going to entail um, for like what our plans were. So just got to reboot a little bit. Um, so yeah, right now I like, I'm as lost as y'all are. <laughs> so right now, status quo, status quo. I will, if you want a new, if you want a real knock tease, I am bringing uh, the Sapelo XL in 
uh, Raven and Steel to Baltimore. So there you go. That's the one knock news I have today. I have uh, Sapelo XLs, which is just a dope case. I love that case. I think I want to make the Sapelo XL in a traveler size. What do y'all think? Instead of like a seed um, seed traveler, I might do the um, Sapelo XL traveler first. We'll see. I was sketching that out yesterday. So that's your update. The update is no update yet. Things have changed. Don't lie to me about your traveler size again. I also want to do it in the XL because that would be a little bit easier to be perfectly honest. The seeds a complex case. Baltimore any day is fine. Friday, Saturday, I'd go. Either of those two. Friday wasn't too busy until late in the afternoon. Saturday was pretty busy all day. Sunday was okay busy from what I remember. I mean, there's no, it depends on if you want to do any after hours stuff. Like Friday after hours is the Erasable podcast. Saturday after hours is Pin Show Family Feud. Um, Sunday after hours is Brad Goes to Sleep. So pick whichever is the highlight. So yeah, just depends. If you're just going to the show, any day's fine. I'd probably go Friday or Saturday as opposed to Sunday. But if you're going to stay after hours, definitely Friday and Saturday. Where can we get tickets for Brad Goes to Sleep? Dave, you have a permanent ticket for that event. You and me, buddy. One week away. Are you ready, Brooks? I'm not even remotely. Like, it is not even registering with me that I leave a week from today. So that's a good point. No stream next Thursday. I'll be... I'll be en route to Baltimore, so schedule schedule alert. <laughs> See, you pay me, Dave. That's how the way it works. Makers panel and Pincho after dark in addition to Jeopardy all on Saturday. Thank you, Evan. Yeah, any show questions? We have Evan in the chat. Uh, he runs the Baltimore Pin Show, and then uh, Corinne's in here in here too. She just I don't know what she does. She pretends about a bunch of Baltimore stuff. I don't know exactly what. <laughs> So, um, I signed up for the erasable the erasable has a, um, a seating thing. If you want, if someone wants to grab that link, I think it's erasable.us slash Baltimore. If you're interested in going, it's just like a seat reservation thing. So they can get an idea of who wants to go. So I did that yesterday. MD girl for life, Andrew Ratner out. She was in here earlier. I don't know if she's still here. She's probably ignoring me. She really, I mean, she's good at ignoring me, but I kind of returned the favor. So <clears throat> like I owe her a bunch of stuff for Jeopardy, but like I haven't even looked at it. <clears throat> so that's how I roll. Is Canaan play in here yet? Jesse's excited for Baltimore. I got I to gotta call out uh, one of the members of our chat sent me something. I'll wait and see if they show up. They're on West Coast time. We'll see if they show up later. Any shuttles to the hotel from the train station? There you go. There's a there's a, real, a legit show question that I can't answer. <laughs> Taking the mark. All right. Oh, yeah. Did we fly together last time, Brooks? It's like 11-ish. Was this the show we flew together? Let me look, see. You're no rock and roll fun. 11 a.m. Uh, DL0551. That could be in your ballpark if you're hopping over. Or do you drive? No, you fly to the Atlanta. <laughs> it might be the same again. Yeah. I have a I have a lot of show and tell stuff today. Which we're gonna get to. Um first thing that I teased in the title is uh I got a special delivery yesterday. Dun, 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 dun. Man, these look good. 
Um, so yeah, this is the Kokuyo sketchbook. This is the classic Japanese pocket notebook. It came out amazing. Um, the best, I got a whole palette, essentially. Um, these are like thin pockety notebooks. So the best compliment I got on these is that the people helping me source this from Japan said that they liked them so much and they were, they, they were, how do they put it? It was respectful to the original and they loved the design and they appreciated how they turned out. Um, and that's all I needed to hear. Like, I, I don't know what it would have, what, what, what something bad would have looked like. Like I wouldn't have done anything to diff, done anything different. Um, <clears throat> but for the people on the, um, on the Japanese side of the, of the world to be proud of being involved in this project made me feel really good. So, um, 9 30 AM. All right. So you're before me. So, um, they will not be a Baltimore. I'm not, I'm not, lo I don't lug notebooks. Um, you'll be able to order them. It's a good question. I'm not gonna have time to get them up this weekend and then I'm gone next weekend. So it might be like three weeks. So, um, I don't know if I get fr <sighs> Yeah, that's a good question. Podcast planner. So if I put them up this weekend, number one, I don't know if I have time. Number two, that means I have to ship while I'm getting ready for Baltimore, which I don't need hundreds of orders to try to get out while I'm packing for Baltimore. Then I'm in Baltimore. So we'll probably do, once I get back from Baltimore, the weekend after I get back from Baltimore. So whatever that weekend is. Uh, size, tiny, number of pages, few. Yes, so that's why I wanted to show them because these notebooks are not for everybody. One, they're going to be expensive, right? It's a hardcover. It's thin. Let me get you uh, an example here. Well, here's a Retro 51. So you can see the size of it. So it is not an A5. These are the Kakuyo sketch note. These are the traditional Kakuyo sketch note. Do they call these a size? Tony, you would know better than me. It's definitely not A5. It's smaller, and it's it's is a very very thin. It's made to be in the in the pocket. This was this is like this is Japanese field notes, right? This is what they've used since like the 50s and 60s. So 40 sheets. So it's a three millimeter grid. Like not everyone's gonna like that. That is like a no joke grid, right? It's like a really really crazy check. So dimensions. I don't guess there are any real dimension 6.6 .6 inches by 3.8 but yeah started it this was in yeah this is like this is like the platinum uef nib companion but it's fountain pen friendly right so yeah ever since like the late 50s and 60s this was what the japanese used as they field notes this was their pocket notebook but it was sturdier because they'd use it literally out in the field so it's a hard cover, um, but it's still flexible. Like you put it in your pocket and it'll, it'll bend a little bit. Hang on. I got to sneeze. Oof. Excuse me. Um, yeah. So you're going to want to use fine nibs probably how much, so how much are these? So these are $5 on Yoseka stationary site that's for the generic with these like I don't have I don't have the price yet they're waiting on the uh <laughs> sorry they're waiting on the um I'm waiting on this final shipping charge I there I don't see any way I'll be able to sell these for less than eight dollars each and that might be too low so I'll try to do like an individual for like a regular price then I'll do like a three pack for a little bit of a break so pricing to be determined, they will not be $5. I promise you that they could be double, like just because of the stamping um, and then the shipping from Japan. Like we went, what I had to do to get these is a very non-standard thing. So basically I'm having to pay shipping twice, right? 
So I had to get them shipped to Japan, shipped to a source in Japan who then had to ship them to me and I have to pay for all that shipping, right, to get these. So I'll know the final price before, you know, next week or so. So I'm just waiting on that. I'm waiting on the final shipping charge to be able to nail down the price. I don't see, yeah, but it's not like a, it's not like a huge substantial notebook, right? Like, I think it's a fair price. Like, I'd pay eight bucks for this all day long. But, you know, it's not like a big, huge, thick notebook. Can I buy them directly from your... I ordered... They ordered... This was custom through Kakuyo's site builder, Mr. Blathered, Dwayne. And then I got them shipped to someone in Japan, and then they shipped them to me. Um, so I don't... My source in Japan does not have any of these for sale. Yeah, 40 pounds for a 10 pack or 40 euros. So yeah, like $5 a book seems to be about right for the basic green book. I don't think these would be under eight. I'm guessing just off. This is just me off the top of my head. So let's see if eight, three times eight, what's that? 24, right? So maybe we could do, maybe I could do something closer to 20 or 22 for like a three pack, right? I'll figure out the math. But anyway, I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled with how these look. Um, I ordered 300 of them to test. Um, so we'll see how it goes. And I can always order more. It didn't take too long. Like by the time we got everything approved and everything, it was only like, it was like two months till they showed up at my door, which I think is pretty fair. And, um, yeah, I mean, I'll bring this to Baltimore if y'all want to look at it because they won't be for sale yet to see if y'all even like it. But I'm happy with how they turned out. The people I worked with are happy how they turned out. So, yeah. Do you assume that ha I will have 300 to sell? Yeah, I mean, I have 300 sitting in my in my, um, in my my house right now. Yeah, so it's, it's three millimeter. It's the traditional three millimeter grid. So it's the tr traditional paper. Oh, do I lose some in shipping? Yeah, but I'll only hold back like 10. You know, I'll hold back about 10 in the first batch. Not going to worry about it too much. Yay, Miss G's Crafties. I love that pen. Yeah, 289 to sell. Well, 290. This will count as one of the 10. This will be mine. Yeah, and how many I steal? Selling on the blog site. Yes, the pen attic shop. And that's the other thing with the pricing. The pen attic members will, the discount will apply to this, so. <clears throat> so I just got to make sure whatever the math is I just got to make sure I'm not losing money <laughs> so that's what we're doing <clears throat> so they will release the Panatic members first and Panatic members will get a discount so that's the math that's the math we got to work on so as per rules here, we sh I should have like a little ticker. Rules of the, rules of the Brad stream rules. Whatever I say on stream is subject to change and most likely will. All right. So we can talk anything. We can talk about anything. I don't have anything planned for Baltimore, Andrew. I will be far too busy for that. You know, I'll be working all day and then events all night. And then I'll just want to collapse. So, nothing planned. But, now that you bring in that, we can go on to our next topic. <clears throat> I recorded the first Friends of the Show yesterday. It went exceedingly well. I haven't edited it yet. I'm going to get it. I should get it out for this week's uh, refill. But I haven't edited it yet. I got to make sure the RSS feed's working. I got to make sure it's not a public RSS feed. I mean, it's a public RSS feed, but I got to make sure it's not um, cataloged by podcatchers. I don't want anyone to be able to search it. Um, so, which before I was able to do with the Dowdy and the Doctor feed. I'm using the same platform. I'm hoping it works the same way. Um, yeah, that's the weird part about this. So, Dave, I got your appointment. I sent you an email. Tony, yeah, just DM me. We'll schedule a time. Um, 
so yesterday i don't want to i don't want to spoil it but it was with uh someone who i didn't know right so that was kind of one of the cool parts about it urban i got to get with you too uh to re redo the time schedule yesterday's interview with someone is with someone that i don't know in the online world necessarily or like through a pin show or through like blog comments or twitch chats like it was just like a reader and a member and they were the they signed up to like the first time slot it was everything i wanted it to be i was very happy very happy yeah brooks i'll uh i'll email you and get you get you on the list and we'll set up a time to talk so we're just doing a little short like and i think it was i think we stayed like under 20 minutes like which was great and if i can do that like if this is how it's gonna work and like we didn't have any technical issues yesterday which was the best part i can definitely do more i definitely want to do more than one of these a month maybe like an every other week thing like i every week is too much that's just too much work for me just to be honest um but if i can bank a bunch and then have them ready every two weeks i think that would be pretty cool um i think y'all are gonna like it um i just smiled the whole time i had just like a thoroughly great time good morning rich dicks um will i be at the san francisco pen show maybe to be determined i don't know my schedule past atlanta yet so we'll see um we'll see um so yeah it was uh it was great good morning even supposing i just had like the best time i'm kind of glad it was with someone i didn't know the first time good morning good morning um the first one was with someone i didn't know so i could just kind of test like the ideas that i had in my head just like the very basic conversations like once y'all start listening to these you'll have to start telling me okay like what do you want to know about these people that i'm talking to right like i, I kept this one very basic because i didn't know a lot about the person i was talking to so we talked about you know like how did you get started in stationary um how do you use stationary in your you know day job if you do that type of stuff yeah friends of the show um it was just it was great so yeah this week i need to put out the calendar calendly sign up otherwise we can just schedule it through email so i have some dedicated sign up slots um which i didn't put in last week's newsletter i'll put it in this week's when i publish this i'll publish it this weekend the link but otherwise just email me and we can set up a slot those were just some fixed slots i wanted to that's like one of the ways i had to make myself do it right is set up those fixed slots and say you sign up and then i'll show up and make the work happen right <laughs> that was the only way i was going to get like the organization behind the push to make me actually do this thing right i've been talking about this forever how long have i been talking about this like years i've wanted to do something like this and then you get busy and other things happen so i'll put the link i'll refresh the link this weekend so everyone has can see it otherwise i don't care if those times are flexible like i wanted to have something out there for some people but then we can work on it um individually which is a lot it's fun it's i am i thoroughly enjoyed it like it was very easy very simple very straightforward but like like i told this person when i was talking to them i want it to be all right see you jonathan I wanted it to be like we were just sitting down at a restaurant and having to talk about stationery. Like, you can ask me questions. Um, you know, I'm just going to ask, like, you know, hey, what do you like? What are you into? Well, you know, what pins are you using? Why do you use this for work? Um, you know, what made you first, like, get into stationery? Um, what are your favorite? What's your favorite pen? You know, what's your Desert Island pen? Like, that's it. 20 minutes bam and we were done and i just had a huge smile on my face so i'm very happy with how it went very happy so i hope y'all will like it too i'll publish it this weekend uh as long as i don't have any problems publishing it i will i will get it done this weekend um and then we'll go from there so i know i have uh did schmevelin show up yet i already have an issue with her schedule i had next thursday on the calendar that she signed up for and i'm traveling to baltimore so i don't really have this whole calendar sign up thing down yet like urban i had the wrong time in for urban like i put in a.m instead of p.m and he signed up you know for his perfect time zone and i'm like whoops <laughs> so i've screwed this up every way you can but um 
we'll we'll manage it. Um, for those who are just joining, I got this. Boom. Kukuyo sketchbook. So that's that's the that's the sh today's uh, stream title. Notebook show and tell. I'm very happy about that. Whew. I talked a lot. <clears throat> that's one of the things I got to learn. That's the hardest thing when podcasting is learning when to be quiet. I'm not very good at that sometimes. All right, I got something cool in the mail. Um, <clears throat> yes, I will tap on the cover of the notebook, Dave. It's hardbound. Urban, I couldn't agree with you more, which is why I'm doing it this way. Um, I despise editing. So that's like my one flaw in my game, if you will. That's my one weakness is I hate editing anything. I don't mind editing words. I'm not good at it, but I don't mind it. I hate editing pictures. I hate editing video and I hate editing audio. So um so I'm doing this this is going to be an unedited uh podcast. I'm going to cut the beginning and cut the end if I have space and we're just going to let everything else run in the middle. So like uh the person I recorded this time their levels were very low, so I can go in in this platform, adjust the levels. You know, we'll try to even it up as much as possible because they were a little bit quiet. Um so and then that's it like and i'll cut like the five second blank in the beginning that's it uh even supposing i don't know it's gonna be at least eight dollars it might be more per book and then i'll have a break for like a three pack sorry it's a little bit dark in here rich sticks thanks buddy i appreciate it so much you're the best you're the best all right did i already say what this is all right, if I got this in the mail and it's stationary related, what do you think this is? While well, I get my knife to open it up. It is a stationary product, <laughs> really big retro 51, big paper. <laughs> huge retro 51, huge. <laughs> what would you think this is? So let me see, how can I? Wow, I didn't even need my knife. Like, for all the tape and paper going on here, it, the the end cap wasn't sealed. I just popped the thing straight off. Retro 5100. I like it. All right. Any guesses yet? Any guess? Any guess? All right, so that's that's the sleeve it comes in. That's the exterior. Ooh, this smells good. That's the sleeve it comes in. Any guess yet? It's a pencil holder. It's a pencil case made out of wood, wood sleeve, wood holder, comes with a ruler in the bottom, but it's designed. I brought pencils. I brought pencils just so I could stuff them in here because I knew what was in there. I'll tell you who made it in just a second. Um, this is one of the wildest emails, product emails I've ever received. And like, I'm very hesitant to respond to a lot of these. So like I talked to this guy, right? Um, so it's a pencil, pencil holder. It's a little bit slidey. Like there'll be some issues with it rolling and stuff. Yeah. But I guess it's probably more for like your bag or backpack, right? Um, so his name. <coughs> His name is Frederick. He's from Montreal. And he just emailed me out of the blue. I guess, you know, he, he found me on the internets. Let's pull up his website here. So y'all can see it. 
um, because I'm not going to be able to pronounce it. It's La Berlu. And he makes wooden um, holders types of stuff. Wooden accessories. <clears throat> and he emailed me. And I almost didn't take him up on it. On checking out the product. It was actually, and I think I've mentioned this before. Like, there's a misconception from a lot of makers out there yes sorry thank you andrew there's a misconception out there that people like me charge for reviews so like he let off his email he's like hey i know i know um you do paid reviews i'm like no i, do, I don't do paid reviews i will never do paid reviews um and no one in our industry does paid reviews he's like but i don't have a lot of money to like to pay for my product to get reviewed and i'm like no that's not how it works at all and i was like well, let me look at these products and then i landed on this one and this was actually what he wanted to to feature um but he has other products in here but he's a he's a woodworker and so this is uh boy my french is bad these days you can pay me to review anything you want i just won't publish it <laughs> so let's see these things expand they don't so anyway there's the biggest there's the big picture so he um so i i, I replied i was like I, your work is beautiful um you know, and if you want me to take a look at it, I'd be happy to give you my thoughts on it and, you know, review it, you know, if it works. Does it have an English button? Where? Thank you. So he's based in Montreal. He's just an individual. Learning knife, pencil case. But what is a banana board? Let's see what a banana board is. It's a favorite of the playroom. It's a tunnel. It's a table. Oh, I see. <coughs> oh, it's like a it's like one of those balance boards. That's cool. So then, the pencil case. So mine has the walnut sleeve, right? And then there's a cherry wood sleeve. Um, yeah. So there's the two different color sleeves. What's the? Um, <coughs> Excuse me. I hope I'm not getting sick. My daughter's been home sick for two days. What's the um, Canadian trans... Like, there's no way this should be $40. Like, it's way too low. Right? This is, like, handmade. Like, I don't know. It just seems like the working on this for the price, it seems, like, way too low. Like I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have like blinked if it was, if it was twice as much really, because like it's substantial, like it may not be the most functional thing in the world, right? Like where I'm going to use this, how I'm going to use this, why would I use this? But from a design perspective and a, um, creative perspective, like I love it. Like it's really great. Um, so yeah, La Berlue. I wonder what that means. Does anyone want to translate? Where's Urban? Can you translate French? What's La Berlue? I could probably just do Google Translate. <clears throat> uh, it means the Berlue. Yeah, I got nothing. I don't know if that's a Montreal thing or, or what. I'll email Nick. Nick and Camille. <coughs> they can inform me. So, yeah. Um, nicest guy to talk about during email. Oh, there he is. Is this this is Frederic. Um, he's a very handsome woodworker. La Berlue is our way of reinventing daily objects to make them playful, creative, and thought-provoking. So yeah, like this is super interesting, like to me, like 
like you would definitely have to see this in person. It is definitely not, you know, a highly functional object, but it's a beautifully designed object. And like, there's a difference in these things, but I am super impressed with this. I am super impressed with the price. It's kind of wild. Um, I would have thought for sure this would be more expensive than what it is. So yeah, so that's um, that's this pencil holder. Like, and there's a little wood wooden um, wooden ruler in in there. But you can keep like you can see the other accessories in there. And there's here I'll hold this up so they don't fall out. So you know it holds your full length black wings and things like that. So pretty rad, huh? I like it. So he was just like such uh, like a, a nice guy, but I could tell he's like a very novice in like dealing with like sending an email blindly to someone to look at his product. I actually sent him on to uh, Lisa Van Ness because I think she, like this stuff would do good in her store. And uh, I don't know, but that's kind of how my inbox works sometimes. Not a lot. Not a lot of these things get past the gatekeeper, which is me. Like, I'm my own gatekeeper. And sometimes I just don't want to... Uh, sometimes it doesn't strike me as interesting enough. That's interesting, right? That's, like, crazy interesting. Sorry. Here's a... Uh, I got to show you my pencils. This is the Pen Attic pencil. I got this way back in the day from CW. Boom. Should I do Musgrave pencils? They're easy to do customs of. I'm thinking about it. Maybe I'll do Karen Dash. I gotta work on that 849. I have other boxes to open. One of them being the aforementioned CW pencils. Fragile. Um, so we are tweaking my... Um, Pencils for Pen Lovers kit at CW Pencil. Two out, two in. Um, you know, taste changed over time. One of them I wanted in there the first time. Yeah, the Musgrave's great. I gotta listen to the erasables with the uh, Musgrave, Musgrave marketing department on there. I need to listen to that. I just saw that pop in my feed yesterday. <clears throat> so... Oh, this box is hilarious. So if you want to know, if you want to know where your money goes, speaking of which, your pencil subscriptions going up, but all the uh, all the extra um, inserts for the pencil boxes are now packaging for my packages. So there you go. That's where your money goes, chat. Have you thought about making a Kaveco sport case? Yeah, off and on. I'd do something like the lookout for that maybe. So let me see. Can you read that? We'll check in. Happy sampling, Brad, is what it says. I don't need to sample the changes that I made. But I did get some new ones. Okay, so these are just my regular samples. What I'm changing in the the pens, the pencils for pen lovers kit, is I'm taking the uni mark sheet out. And what's the other one? I'm taking the Mitsubishi 9853 out. The Mitsubishi Office. Yeah, small short case would be cool. I want that too. Like for all the things that I do. For all the pens that I love. That would be a good idea. Um, so and, and I'm putting in the Futura, which is one of my favorite pencils. And that's a CW Pens. Uh, collaboration so I didn't know if I could put that in the first time that I made the kit and I was afraid to ask but I asked this time and they said yeah sure no problem so I put that in and then I put in the uh, the magic pencil um, yeah and rickshaw can make like a multiple short pin case too, like several slots and like a single or you can do multiples and um, the other one I'm putting in is the uh, magic. I'm putting in a magic pencil. Like I think if you're like doing a pen sampler to have something fun like that, to have the basic gold magic pencil with the blue or blue, yellow, red uh, tip, like that's gonna be cool. Um, this pack. While we were talking about that, had a meeting with your boss. What did you miss? Did you see the? Did you see the? Um, did you see the pen holder? The pencil holder, Tony. 
Do you see the pencil holder? No? It's an impressive pencil holder. It's a wooden pencil holder from a guy in Montreal. Like, it's super non-functional, but it's super beautiful at the same time. So, it's wooden with a wooden sleeve, and then pencils go in there. Like, it comes all the way off. It's really neat. <clears throat> I gotta get my trash. So I'll be reviewing that for the blog eventually. Like, it's super non-functional, right? Like, you don't, you're not gonna take that in a bag or a backpack, probably. But it's, like, cool. It's, like, looks cool, works cool. All right, so when I was talking with CW Pencil for the changes on the pen case, pen, pen pack, um, they wanted to know if I wanted any other pencils to sample. I really wanted this honking Viking one, right? What's this one called? What up, nerds? Yeah, this looks like a... Uh, this is the right place for the nerds, though. What's this one called? Val, Valbliant. What does that mean? What does that mean in Viking? <laughs> Valbliant. Nick, let's hope Nick Pang doesn't make pencil cases. Uh, got the General's Layout pencil, extra black. <clears throat> yeah, I'm super stoked about that Viking. <laughs> I used to be not not a um, a jumbo pencil guy, but this size works well. I like it. I'm, I'm pretty happy about it. I got the triangular Mitsubishi, which I've never had one of these. It comes in 4B, and it's a uh, triangular barrel, which I usually don't go for these, but it's Mitsubishi Uni, so I like these. Um, I got the Tombow 8900. This is like their base level Tombow, but I don't think I ever had one of these, and I wanted to try it for general writing. Generals feels charcoaly. I'll have to test it. So this is a B grade Tombow 8900. Those unis are nice. Cool. I never tried those. Um, this is the Viarco Den Show. This is it says H3. What does that mean? I don't know what that means. It's the Viarco Den Show. That was one of the new ones on the site, so I wanted to try that. Then I got the Karen Dash Idlevice in 3B because I like to try these softer leads um, when I'm a renowned hard lead guy. Yeah. Uh, what did I say? Yeah. 3B. And then the General's Drafting Pencil. I don't know what this is about, but I wanted to try it. So those were my, that's my pencil test pencils. I should put them in my pencil case, shouldn't I? I didn't need to bring my own pencils. I had a box full of pencils here. Wrong side. So I'll put these in my pencil case. <clears throat> You gotta, I kind of got to take the ruler out at first because it takes up some of the space when I'm filling it. The General's has an oversized core. It looks like it. That's the best Karen Dash. Okay, I'll try that. Because I love the... I like the one... I like the Karen Dash. I like all the Karen Dashes. But there's one with the silver barrel that's a little bit wider than normal. That's one of my favorite ones. It's got a little bit wider diameter, but I don't know the name of it. Um... This General's looks like it has a wider core. Yeah. Oversized core. So this is a pretty good little kit, right? Pretty good little set of pencils. I'm excited to try them out. So they all fit in here, Tony. That's what they will look like in your pin case. I hate the Karen Dash HB. Way too hard and waxy. See, that's kind of how I like them. That's probably why I like the, some of those. So yeah, that's what the pencil case looks like. 
So the, the exterior is a little bit slidey. Like if you picked it up wrong, it could slip out, I bet. Like it's a little bit slidey. Oh, I'm always learning about pencils, Miss G's Crafties. Like, yeah, that's just the whole thing. It takes a while to get to learn all this stuff. You never learn it all either. All right, so that's uh, for my good friends at CW. <laughs> we have the opposite taste in pencil cores. I'm coming around to the soft, uh, the soft and dark side. I am. That that Tombow 4B, what the KKS, whatever, KKH one. That one has had that one opened my eyes. Just making sure I don't need anything here. All right, cool. I'm gonna save this guy in here. Come to the dark side. I just don't like them for writing, but just like general writing. But I get it, like. Once I started using that pen religiously, I was like, this is a very enjoyable pen to write with. Pencil, pencil. See, that's the other reason I keep calling them. I got one more box in here. I can't remember what it is. Ah, um, we have tourmaline, chat. We have Lamy tourmaline. When people say sailor nibs are pencil like, what does that mean? To me, that means they have a little bit of feedback, which to me, and they're firm, which platinum has more of a pencil y feeling to me. Like platinum has more of a feedback. Yeah. They're not glass. So there's a glassy smooth tip on a fountain pen, which is like what Pilot has. Lamy gold nibs are that way. Pelican gold nibs are that way. Then there's um, fountain pen nibs that have feedback when they're on the paper where you hear kind of a shh. Like a, people call it like almost like a pencil feeling, like a scratchiness. It's not scratchy. It's just feedback. And that's where Sailor and Platinum have that. Like you can, I, I say the pen, I call it the pen sings on the page when it does that, as opposed to being just like glassy smooth and no, no noise. All right. So yeah, we got, we got the tourmaline box here. Are these out yet? So the uh, the ink at least looks like it's a different color. At least the box is right. This isn't turquoise. It's showing up bluer on camera. It's green to my eyes here. Um, greener, a blue green. So yeah, Bork and Bork. That's something you want to test out. Like they, um, it's different. All right. So there's the tourmaline bottle. I've got the tourmaline cartridges, and I got the tourmaline pen. I got this in a fine nib. That means I'm going to give it away. I'll probably give away the pen and the ink bottle and maybe keep the cartridge or something. That is super aquamarine looking. Like the ink looks more real, like a new color. Like I know you can't really tell on here. This is a much more green than this pen, which really looks like what they call this Pacific blue. New yellow Twisby Eco? No, I'll have to look on that. It's really pretty. So I'll probably do a giveaway on these. I'll probably throw the cartridges in the stash just for my own use. I'm going to test the ink color. I've been using the uh, the Vista recently. Um, yeah, it looks good, right? It's a good, slightly greener than Pacific Blue. Yes, that's the. I think that's a fair way to put it. Especially the ink. Like this looks really Pacific blue, the pen in the hand. Although I will admit it's a little bit dark in here, but I can tell just like the bottle and the ink cartridges definitely have more a more green tone than the pen has. Uh, than the pen has. So let me look at this um, Twisby. I really like yellow pens. They don't do enough yellow pens. I don't need the Aurora yellow pen. Yeah, that's cool. 
I kind of like the solid color Twisby Eco caps than the translucent. Can you believe I'm saying that? I mean, the translucents look great, but there's something about the solids on these. Good morning, Red Trillium. What do y'all think? Solids or translucents? As a translucent fan myself, I kind of like the solid caps and pistons for my personal use. Yeah, I don't know what it is. And the, the translu that translucent purple was the best one that they've ever done. I think the solids look better. It's, it's just something about how it goes with the rest of the design, right? Yeah, a Model 2 in that color would be awesome. Is that a hint, Marco? Does that need to be my next? So, like, I use the... Um, I use the translucent orange the most, but I got the solid orange one, and that's my favorite. And then I have the blue one, like that light blue cap. Who was saying that? Solid blue eco t osu ats, hundred percent. That's still that was like the first one. That still might be my favorite. Hey, did anyone have any? Uh, even supposing you reminded me, anyone have any uh, nib weirdness in their rose gold? Like Sarah did her review. I posted it this morning, and she was not happy with the nib. Like. She, she just thought it was different. Pizza Pizza, thanks for the follow. Translucent purple is the best. I will give you that. Even better than the orange. I think the purple's the best been the best looking translucent one. Um red that's actually red. Oh, Sarah's in here. Yeah. I was just wondering that Sarah made a good point. Like, does the plating on that nib cause it to write differently? than the stock ecos medium on rose gold was perfect yeah it just could be a qc thing more texture on the page like you can feel a little bit differentness different differentness that's a good different word <clears throat> so yeah yellow's great but yeah something about those solid those solid barrel colors and of course that rose gold is like stupid good so yeah like these are the things I get um, on purpose, but not necessarily to review. Like, I might review the ink, but there's not a lot of need for me to review the pen. Like, it would be like a good Instagram post and giveaway type of thing. So, like, I want to get all the stuff, but it's mostly just to see, to be able to discuss, and then we'll just give it away because I can only review so many Lamy Safaris as much as I like the pen and All Stars. So that's a very beautiful all-star. Great job, team all-star this year. Great job. It just looks like the other one. They say the safari's matte. The people who have seen it in person say it's matte. If it's matte, it's going to crush. I'll probably get the yellow eco and I'll probably get the yellow, the mango safari, which is pretty yellow looking. Because I've always wanted the stock safari in yellow. So I'll probably get the mango one, but it's gonna be hard not to get the purple one. Dilemmas, right? The latest round of pictures look matte to me. I agree with that, Sarah. Full agree. <clears throat> Excuse me. So yeah, I hope they're matte. That would be great. Translucent orange eco. Yeah, I would say I, I definitely prefer the solid orange. Which was weird that they made that one a Japan exclusive. I thought they would have done more than a base color. Safaris don't do it for... I, I totally get that. Safaris are definitely not for everybody. Yeah, I the um did y'all see the new Leonardo uh pink one with rose gold? Did y'all see that? Let me pull this up. I don't know if it's new, it was new to me. So, 
there it is right here in the front so disclosure alert Casa de la Stilografica advertised with me this week they are one of my sponsor site sponsors but I was browsing through their site I actually ordered a different Leonardo I actually ordered the orange Leonardo um, but I was browsing through the site look at this pink one this purple one I mean all these are awesome looking but look at that color <laughs> Like it was hard. They were if this was avail I don't think it was available yet when I was looking for it. Lavender gold trim. Here it is. Rose gold. Lavender rose gold. There it is. Man, that's a good looking pen. I don't have a gold nib Leonardo. This might be the first one. I was gonna um they're not available yet and i ordered the orange one because even though they're 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 a long stilographic is a long time supporter really tony yeah i mean you know i'm i stand the same way you do with steel nibs but i kind of want a reference point too um but i i'd never ordered from steel casa de stilographica and i ordered uh, uh the orange leonardo the whatever the 366 one is um, but if this one was out, I would have, I would have bought this one without question. It is so pretty. I mean, all these are good looking. I'm supposedly getting a, I'm supposedly getting a pretty unique Leonardo soon, but I don't, I, that might, I might not get it for, I don't know when I'm going to get it in a month or two, but aren't all these pretty? That purple one really popped. Good morning, number one, Bob. Thank you. Good morning. But yeah, I only have one Leonardo, so I feel uh, I feel justified in owning a second one, and that will be it. I'm sorry, y'all got to remind me to send these links in the chat instead of just pulling them up. But that that is just crazy. I don't know how they do it so fast. Yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna put that. Um, I'm gonna go home and ink mine up. It's been inked and uninked and tested and untested, and every time I end up uninking it, I've I've forgotten to review it, or if like I've ran it out of ink or something, I've forgotten to review it. <clears throat> I will correct that soon. I was making a list of things, of review things that I have like that on the on the urgent queue. The Memento Zero is the perfect first Leonardo, in my opinion. I do. That's what I have. Oh, uh, what was number two? Oh, Rose Gold Twisby's fine. Number three, has anyone found the new Kaveco student pins available in the U.S.? I have not, but I haven't been looking. So, anyone, 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 Bueller? I'm sure Pen Chale has pre-orders up. They always tend to do pre-orders. Where as opposed to like jet pens, they just wait till it's in stock, then they throw it up there. A Leonardo with an eight nib. That's cool. Yeah, I'm gonna go. So in Baltimore, I'll see what other Leonardos they have. I might just hold off for that pink and rose gold one. That would be a good, I have the blue Hawaii Memento Zero. So that would be a good um, a good combination with it, I think. Such a pretty pen. Are they different finishes, Tony? Both black. I think the black one was maybe my second choice, but I really, they have such rhodium and ruthenium. Gotcha. <coughs> they have such pretty color ones that I couldn't pull the trigger on the black one for my first one. But I do like, I did like how the black ones looked. They were pretty neat. So why do you have two of them? You need the rose gold and purple one. Yeah, when they came out, I was curious too, Sir Jerkface. I was like, what is what is happening? 
Oh, you got one in a trade. Well, that makes more sense. But yeah, I'm gonna. Uh, I have a very unique one that I'll be able to share with you one day if I can get it. It's in route. Do y'all say in route or en route? So if those, I don't know when those those pink and rose gold, purple and rose gold ones come out, but if they're out in Baltimore, I will come with one. Come home with one. Words. All right, what else do we need to talk about? We covered a lot today. <laughs> Bone apple tea. <clears> or <throat> 100th limited edition ink. Yes, please share pictures. I want to buy the singular colors if I can. I didn't want to go. I didn't want to spring for the whole set. I don't use enough ink like Jesse. What's the Bella? Oh, that's the new Funko Doodle shape. How do you like it? Is it good? I didn't read. I haven't read. I'm obviously not reading the review. That is a large pen in your hand. Wow. That is girthy. It's pretty. Yeah, it's so big. Will it fit in your pen case? I don't like the clip stamping. <coughs> All right, you're digging it. Absolutely thrilled for a chonker. Jesse, two thumbs up for the chonkers. It's really pretty. Maybe want to check the third host of the Pit Attic stream after I get off Instagram. Why? Is it news related? Because I already know the news. All right, go look. Yeah, I'm well aware of any news. I don't even know her. Let's do this. Man, it's pouring outside. What is your Instagram feed? Bum bum bum. Maybe at the bottom of the page. There it is. Bam. Thank you. Yep. Anna lost her job. It is now public. Super sad. Stupid Hallmark. We've been talking. We've been talking off and on. So, I mean, no immediate plans. Nothing to share. I'm going to share whatever she needs to share, but it sucks. I hate it for her. So, <clears throat> yeah. Everyone give out. Give a shout out to Anna. If you get a chance. So we will um, um we'll see her in Atlanta. Oh, she'll be in Baltimore, so I'll see her in Baltimore. So we'll we'll talk more. So uh you know, I don't know what her plans are, so we'll let her her share any of that, but it, it just sucks. What sucks the most is like they they drug this out. They they had them on like eggshells. Yeah, and their KC office is HQ, right? I mean, that's like the big that's like that's like it for Hallmark. So and she'd been there for how long? Does she say how long? It was a long time. Uh, like ten to fifteen years. So yeah. Seventeen years. God dang. That's rough. I hate that. So yeah. Thoughts out to Anna. <clears throat> Definitely give her some love today and this week and in the future. She's easy to love on. She's great. One of my favorite people in the world. So it sucks. It sucks. Mm. I'll get her all the drinks in Baltimore, Jesse, for sure. For sure. She's already booked her flight to Atlanta. 
So she will be there on the panel with us. I got to figure out who we're interviewing in Atlanta. I think I had an idea. Now I'm, I can't remember who I said I was going to do. No, no, no. Her flight to Atlanta. I know she, she's driving out to Baltimore with the, uh, Lisa. I may have said that wrong. What did I say I was going to do in Atlanta? I don't know. I'm losing my mind. Losing my mind, but that's pretty easy to do. All right. What else do we need? We need it on a positive note. What else do we need to talk about? Because I got to go. I got to work. Oh, I will show you. Um, I was waiting to see if uh, K9 play showed up. Oh, wait. They're here. K9 play sent me stamps. <laughs> these are awesome. Thanks for sending these. I really appreciate it. I laughed on your at your note. What notebook did you write your note in? So K9 Play wrote me this note on this little piece of paper like this. It looked like it was ripped out of a notebook that's about that big. About as big as my thumb. Moleskine. That's hilarious. <clears throat> so these are bioluminescent life stamps. So K9 Play saw me run out of stamps on last stream and be in the awesome postal postal employee they send me some stamps so thank you schmevelin schmevelin i i invoked your name in vain earlier i need to talk to you um because your scheduled your scheduled friend of the show um event your scheduled time slot is the day i leave for baltimore which i didn't realize so i will be emailing you to try to uh to rearrange a new time sorry about that <clears throat> In with the new emote. It looks awesome. Boom. I didn't think it was going to turn out that good. I didn't know what to what to uh, what to expect. It, it turned out way better than I could have hoped, which is why you it's why you you pay people the big bucks to do things like that. Yeah. So yeah, like. I tried to put in, oh, like, this seems like a reasonable schedule. And then, like, I've already had to do, like, three ones. Kicks, three changes. Kickstarter next week, I probably, yeah. That's what I got to start working on this afternoon. So I got to write that whole thing up um, and get it submitted by the time the weekend is out. Just so we make sure we get approvals. Um, which we're in, we're in whatever bucket of approvals that only takes, like, an hour as opposed to days. So we've run enough projects, uh, enough healthy projects to have kind of blanket approval after a quick cursory glance. We don't have to wait for forever to, to turn it on. What's the retro going to cost? Over $60. So it just depends on what... I got to do budgeting today too, so... I would say between 60 and 70. And it'll be a package deal. Whatever the price is, we'll get all the things. Right? I'm going to get, uh, I've already talked to Anna about doing a, we need an index for all the finials, right? So talking about Anna doing um, with Skylab a, a letterpress. Have y'all seen the bingo cards that Skylab made? So doing like a card, letterpress card of all the finials that says what they are and like what year. Like we don't have any of this stuff designed yet. So I just got to release the Kickstarter and then we'll re release designs as we go. So whatever it is will be like an all-in-one price and that's that's what I'm trying to get um, finalized, right? So it might be $70, but it includes all the things. I don't think it would be much more than that. Like, we just try to make enough money to cover our expenses. But we'll more than cover our expenses this year because I think a lot of people will just jump on jump on the project for what it for the pen without necessarily like needing the campaign stuff which is fine like 
Um, I don't know that I'm going to do a pin only level. I guess I kind of have to, right? It seems like a pain in the ass. I don't know. I'm real, with what's taken me, just like the audio project, right? I think about these little details a lot and it just locks me up. It's like I can't, I can't function like trying to decide to do the right, which is the right decision to make. So I do definitely like lock up on some of that stuff is what it is. <clears throat> Agreed, but they're going to be paying. They're essentially going to be paying for it, right? Force the vultures to fund your project. Yeah. And plus, it, I want it to. It's going to include that. I mean, that letter, the letterpress card. It's not going to be cheap anyway, right? I mean, that's several bucks worth of worth of um, thing. <laughs> First time you heard me swear. Yeah, I don't swear too much. <clears throat> I definitely try not to swear like I have a habit of not doing it like speaking publicly I do in person sometimes though <laughs> that one just kind of flew so yeah like this project is for us right like the the collective us right any outsiders they can complain all they want they don't know they're not there for the right reasons anyways right I think that's fair so we'll probably just have like a video only level which will be like the ten or fifteen dollar level, and then we'll have a all the things level, which is the pen and the the card and whatever else we do <clears throat> for the project. So, yes, yes, Evan, I agree. I forget that sometimes. Yeah, what do they say for ass in the good place? Do they do they use that word? Because those are the words I usually use. I usually use the good place curse words. But I don't guess they have one for a -double -S, do they? It's all shirts and forks. Ash. Do they say ash? Maybe. <laughs> all right. Well, my phone's blowing up. I got a lot to get to. All right. Yeah, we'll always do a video only level for this. That's a no-brainer. Always have, always will. All right, Ash. I got to work on that. Ash. All right. That's a wrap. Got to go get to got to go get to other work. I'll be around all afternoon. Y'all probably see me when I'm writing. I I have I usually have Twitter going, so I'll I'll have if you need to yell at me on Twitter, I'll be on Twitter and, and probably replying uh, and not working. So that's pretty much the plan the rest of the day. All right. Thank y'all. Enjoy the pen emote. Y'all have a great day. Have fun. Thanks for everything. <laughs>